Well, it's finally starting to look like spring up here in Lewis County. Most of the snow is gone. We're gonna, today we're gonna get some uh, tomato steaks in. I'm gonna try a new method. I'm just gonna take some, uh, these are white ash poles that I've cut around my fence line. I trimmed them out. I'm just gonna make a, just a simple triangle here. And on top, I'm gonna put the longer poles. And we'll have verticals every, about every four feet. And that'll hold the top. And then on the sides, I'm gonna put, put a pole about halfway up on each side. In this bed, I'm gonna plant my, uh, my indeterminate tomatoes. They're gonna be brandy wines. They're a big, big, tall tomato plant. They need a lot of support. And I'm gonna put these in here first because this gets the most sun. So they're gonna get nice and big and bushy. <clears throat> Should have a lot of tomatoes on them. Then they're gonna cast a little bit of shade. So in this bed, I think I'll do my potatoes in here. I'll plant those today too. Back here in the third bed. I'm just gonna do a single rail. These are gonna be cherry tomatoes. They won't get quite as high. So they'll still get really good sunlight back in here. Cause they'll be back here in the middle. And what I'll do with these, I'll just drive a stake in about every four feet. And these rails will be much lower to the ground. Your cherry tomatoes really don't need support, but it helps, it keeps them off the ground so they don't rot. And you get a little bit bigger plants and more fruit on them. Well, let's get started on this one. And what I'm gonna use, just some three inch deck screws. Fasten all this together. And I got a bunch of bale strings. I might eventually just tie it all together and pull my screws back out. But I'll just leave the screws in for now. So I got my first section in and braced. I'll move ahead to, to this one. And I've got a mark here four feet on the outside. I was going to do this last weekend, but the ground was still froze. We had some really nice days. We're finally thawed out here now. So we're just going to cross them over. Try to get them about the same every time. These are all pre-cut five feet long. The bed is four feet wide. Just get a screw in here. So these are going to be eight feet apart. I cut these poles nine feet long. Just kind of eyeball that and get it straight. Get some screws in there to hold that. And I think I'll come back today when it's nicer out and probably tie all these in with bale strings. Jab them down in tight. These screws make everything a lot easier. See there, that pokes out. I'll probably come back through and tie them and pull these screws out so they don't poke me. But if you come down here, these are all white ash that I cut here. And 
prefer those two bottom rails. I'm going to use these beach whips. These are basically, in northern New York State, a weed. Whenever they log the woods, these shoot right up. I got these off my brother's wood lot. They're just, they're everywhere. You can get as many as you want. If you know anybody with a wood lot, they'd be happy to get rid of them. So I think next year, since I cleared my fence lines out, they won't be ready to recut for a few years. I'll probably use all beach. They're pretty strong. They're, as you can see, a lot straighter. So, on my lower rail, we're just going to screw these about and eyeball them about halfway. Screw them in. That's the basic idea. Now when I plant my tomatoes, which is probably going to be two months, it's uh, not even quite April 1st yet. We plant about around the 20th of May up here. I'll space my plants two feet apart and I'll get one under each V and one in the middle. And then to get those started, I'll just take my strings, tie these up here, and we'll just train them up that until they get started. Then as they bush out, we'll tie them to here. But eventually they should get oh, a foot or more above that. So let's jump over here to this. I did here is I just cut three foot stakes out of white ash and you have to sharpen them with machete just real quick put a point on them use a hammer you might not even need it we had a heavy rain last night the ground's pretty soft and here's our mark for four feet. We'll just put that in there in the middle. Get them in. And we'll get our top rail on. have it on this side. This will be a much simpler one. These don't need near as much support. There, that's sticking out. I'll probably come back and tie these and get the screw out of the way. plant these tomatoes I'll probably 
I'll put these closer together, maybe maybe 20 inches, maybe 18 inches apart. And then they'll just get, they'll get planted out here in the front. And as they grow, our prevailing wind blows that way. So it'll just kind of blow them into that and we'll tie them up and get them off the ground. So we'll finish these up and then I'll, I'll show you what I got when I'm all done. So I've got all these stakes in now. This is my uh, short rail for the cherry tomatoes. And I'll come back someday when it's warm and my hands aren't so numb. I'll tie all this up good, pull those screws back out. And these are big tomato trellis. We'll fill this with brandywine tomatoes. You just want to make sure on each end you get a, a diagonal brace. As you can see, it's not real pretty. It's a little crude. It's got kind of a rustic elegance, but it'll look a lot better when it's covered with tomato plants.